With us here today are Susie Adams, Chief Technology Officer for Microsoft, and Dennis Tolliver, ISS Blade Specialist with HP's Server Storage and Networking Group. Where is the green IT movement today in government, as opposed to five years ago? Have we reached a level of maturity? What we've seen is a couple of different trends, especially if you look across the federal government, there's been some really great work done with some of the, the telework initiatives, the dynamic data center, or the data center consolidation projects that are out there, um, having agencies take a, look, take a really hard look at how many data centers do they have, how are they going to consolidate these down, how do they inject uh, technology like virtualization into their data centers and do it in an efficient manner. So HP and Microsoft are, are huge enterprises. What examples can you share with us from HP's experience in greening their IT? Our uh, chief technology officer looked at the uh, problem of too many data centers and decided to reduce that. So from 80 some data centers, shrunk that to six. So we did a very large consolidation of the number of data centers we had, which is efficient in itself. It saves you energy and cooling because we're using the latest technology. We're using our latest technology to do that. Um, so that actually funded itself over a very short period of time from savings. In the data center space, uh, we've done, we've made a lot of adva advancements. For example, we have a data center in Quincy, Washington that is hydropowered, completely 100% hydropowered. We have a data center in Ireland, Dublin, Ireland that is cooled by the outside air so there are no chillers in the data center. And we recently announced uh, a new technology that we call an IT pack. So think of it as a container-based um, sustainable system where literally you can put these on a, a data center floor uh, and run just a, a garden hose to it. With power management, you know, once you, once a, you, know, you, you help you know, get a, a data center or, 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 a, or a desktop to, to, to align themselves toward green IT, what kind of tools can you give in terms of power, to enable you know, a, a user to have better power management in their enterprise? There's been some great work uh, that we've done just with our software products and working in partnership with our OEM vendors like HP to build on top of Dennis, on top of HP's work from the processor and people like Intel's work on the processors to do things like help uh, when you install Windows 7, for example, the power management features are on uh, automatically. Uh, when your Windows 7 machine is actually up and it's idle, right, we take advantage of those processor advancements and the innovation that's been done in that space. Um, to utilize that more effectively so that you're running at 50% less power utilization. Dennis, uh, what are three keys to a successful green IT initiative? You consolidate your servers into blades, into a blade enclosure, and therefore it uses less power supplies and less fans, and you have a very efficient way of manage the, managing the cooling of that. It saves up 30% plus over traditional rack mount servers. So address that first, and then the virtualization of servers has become very popular. Um, because the processors have become ever more powerful, but the demands, the workload demands, haven't. So we have many instances of servers, physical servers, that couldn't be consolidated into virtual servers. So we do a many-to-one consolidation with virtualization software. Um, just to speak to consolidation, again, is when you reduce the number of servers, you don't need as much space to put them. Uh, what we've done at HP is we had 86 uh, or so data center, major data centers, and have shrunk that to six, and then use our own technology, the new technology, mostly blade servers to do that, and then also do things, as Microsoft has done, some creative things with cooling to make sure that you have very efficient cooling there. The first thing that, uh, at least what we've learned internally at Microsoft, is that you really have to change how you incentivize the management staff that's responsible for doing things like running your data centers and procuring equipment. Um, for example, in data centers today, most data center managers are gold by uptime. That's how they're compensated is how, you know, how many nines can they, can they manage to. And what we've done in our data centers is kind of flip that around and actually goal our managers by their power, their power efficiency and their PUE and their ability to deliver the services still with that uptime but under a certain PUE because it's one of the, the one, one places uh, in, the, in the world where if you lower your energy costs you're actually going to save money at about the same rate as your energy costs. Um, the second thing is take advantage of the equipment that you already own and use. Uh, if, it's not, if it's not end of life, um, using vir virtualization technologies that exist today, they've been on the market for years. Um, and the third is really you need to monitor and manage Right, this environment. If you don't know where your chat, where your your uh, the the energy drain is going or coming from, or you don't know how much energy you're actually using today, which 
is a big problem across these very large agencies that have data centers will, you know, uh, data centers across the country. Um, how do they actually know, you know, do they know their carbon footprint? And can they monitor their carbon footprint on a daily basis? Um, Microsoft, for example, we wrote a tool that we call Scry that helps us do that down to the individual server level. So we can look at in, on a single dashboard. We can actually look down based on sensors that we have in our data centers uh, and look down and actually see the hot spots. Right, which, which particular racks of servers have the highest PUE, and then how can we mitigate that by possibly moving them around in data centers, or maybe perhaps one of the, one of the servers needs an end of life. But those types of management software, software products are, are on the markets today, and I think that if government agencies can actually get to that level right, of management sophistication, that they will be able to uh, very quickly eliminate uh, some of the energy consumption costs that they're seeing today in their data centers. And the last thing I guess I'll mention there is that it's not, it doesn't stop really at the data center. There's a lot that can be done on the desktop. So if we think about it, in fact, uh, most of the power consumption in the, in the federal government, there's been several studies that show that it's actually the desktop, right, which is where the power consumptions are. We still, uh, consumption usage is. The, Today, for example, if you walk around a federal agency, I'm sure we've all seen this before, you walk around at night and the, the desktops are still on, right? There was this old myth that if you turn off your desktop, right, something magical would happen and it wouldn't, wouldn't turn back on. And so there's been a lot of advancements, especially with you know, Windows 7, as I mentioned before, and even the server technologies uh, that some folks are running on desktop machines uh, to, help, to help lower that consumption. So thank you very much for your, your comments and your guidance today. I think uh, there's no question that green IT is on the, is on the top of mind in, in government today. Uh, we certainly see that the HP and Microsoft have brought fantastic innovations and best practices to market in the last five years. I think the, the, the ability to execute on green IT versus it being a thought or principle a few years ago is really the difference. And the federal consolidation, data center consolidation initiative that gov government's undertaking now will really make you know, this uh, green IT a reality going forward. So I want to thank you, Susie, and thank you, Dennis. We appreciate your, uh, your thoughtful commentary. Thank you very much.